Good afternoon, everybody. It is Wednesday in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My name is Adam Bittner, digital sports producer for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette here with Post-Gazette Sports columnist Joe Starkey for his weekly, um, what's usually his weekly mailbag video. But today we're, we're just going to focus on the passing of Stan Saverin, um, the Pittsburgh broadcasting legend, um, passed away on Monday night. At least that's when we got the news. Um, and, and so, uh, Joe, I just want to get into that, um, you know, what are your reflections now that we've had a little bit of time to digest, you know, whether other personal, professional, you know, where, where are your reflections at this hour? Well, they're personal, but interestingly, it's not from really knowing Stan that well. We certainly uh, cross paths a lot. It was a real honor to be a guest on his radio show many years ago when I started covering the Penguins in the late 90s. And we would chat you know, press box chat from time to time. Maybe I would call him for a comment in a story I was doing. But when I say personal, it's from when I moved to Pittsburgh way back in November of 89. Uh, and that was before Sports Beat, although Stan was already a voice here. And then along came the show Sports Beat. And that's really how I got my education on Pittsburgh sports. And like so many people from Western Pennsylvania, and now, you know, dispersed around the world, really. Stan is one of those voices that's basically, you know, in your family. It's one of the voices in the living room. When people used to share living rooms together and watch TV, it's, it's like a member of the family, honestly. And I became very familiar with his voice and his face and his persona and his knowledge of Pittsburgh sports and uh, that show, Sports Beat, with him and Guy Junker, was really my education into the Pittsburgh sports scene about what it was like here, the fans and uh, the media people, and it was it was a great, great show, an iconic show, really. And I'll always remember coming home from work and watching that. Yeah, Joe, I, I think it's a little poignant at this moment that we're we're losing Stan at a time that we may be losing Pittsburgh's regional sports network as well. Um, I remember that heyday well too. That's when I was, you know, I was young. I was younger than you at that time. And that's kind of how I learned Pittsburgh sports too, even as like a nine-year-old, 10-year-old sitting down every night watching that. I remember vividly watching the night before Mario Lemieux returned in 2001. Um, just, just the energy of that night. And that, show was part of that moment, Joe. Um, you know, it, it, is that part of, of why we're here is that that institution that a lot of us came up with is is gone. And is is it is there an irony in, in you know realizing we may be losing our RSN as well um, at a time when when Stan is is kind of a front of mind for us? Well certainly the business has changed, right? I mean that show was a TV call in show back when people watched TV, regular old TV. You know, I the one I watched on in my little uh, tiny shack in Shadyside, it probably weighed, you know, 300 pounds. It was one of those. And it was, they want, they encouraged, Guy Junker was on, on the radio with us today talking about that. They encouraged, they wanted a lot of call-in to sort of generate discussion. And on TV medium, that worked then. And then, People decided, people in power in these things decided that that medium didn't work so much anymore. But for Stan, you know, he just went to the radio and made it work or went to whatever he was doing and made it work. He was uh, a, a spectacular uh, pre and post game host, uh, you know, for the Penguins and others. And also, uh, as I learned today, many, many other different shows, Penn State football highlight show way back when. Somebody called in and said he did. He did uh, the Steelers coaches show that you see Bob Pompiani do now with Mike Tomlin. Stan was that guy, too, an incredibly versatile performer who could adapt to the times. Do you think we'll ever have a, a sports culture focal point, you know, kind of like that again? Or is are we in the in the era now, Joe, of, um, you know, diffused media? We're talking on YouTube right now. I don't think you told us five years ago this was something you and I'd be doing. We would have guessed. Um, is that going to is that going to make Stan Saverin stand out and stand the test of time? Because it, it is such a titanic achievement what he did and what Guy Junker did all those years ago. It was the last show of its kind around here, 
for sure a call in television show, you know, but like I said, Stan adapted to the times and I, and I think people do too, sports fans do, but yeah, it'll make, it'll make that show stands forever. If you were, if you were somebody in Pittsburgh sports from Mario Lemieux to anybody else you can name, Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, once they were retired, uh, the stars of the day, you went on sports beat. There's there, there was just, you just did that. That was the show to be on. Yeah, no. And, and I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, Joe, what, what was his impact on, you know, his colleagues? People are always intrigued by, you know, what happens behind the scenes in, in Pittsburgh sports media. I tend to think that as, as cities go, listen, everyone's always going to have their personal beefs. That's human nature on, on a certain degree. Uh, but do you think his his congeniality in the way, because that's something that a lot of people have been talking about in the wake of his passing is, you know, what a kind man he was, how he had time for everyone. Do you think that that's part of his legacy is is that I do think compared to some cities that, that you know, we get along as, as a sports media culture here and um, people help each other and, and take care of each other, you know, for the most part when they can. Is, is that part of his legacy as well? Absolutely. You know, the last part of what you said, there's also many contentious media battles and Stan would find himself in one or two of those, one in particular I could think of. Um, but that has nothing to do with his ability to be a mentor. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been in some myself. It, I'm not sure it's quite as um, congenial overall as you just painted it, but uh, Stan himself, another reason he stood out is because he was uh, just the model of decency in a medium that sometimes doesn't always exhibit that. And Adam Crowley was on today uh, over at the fan. He was Stan's producer for many years. And he talked about how Stan, you know, really helped him along as a mentor. And many people would agree with that. Many people have similar stories to Stan having time for them when they were just getting into the business, trying to make their way. Uh, and he absolutely was, in my experience, uh, a kind man who always had time. And this this isn't the kind of business that always lends itself to that. It, uh, talk radio, I mean, talk radio is a cutthroat world. It's a cutthroat world. And Stan never succumbed to that. Like I said, he would have a, you know, a battle or a rivalry with, with somebody here or there. We all do, but he never, never uh, succumbed to it. Yeah, and I, I think that's important. And, yeah, of course, there's there's beefs everywhere, Joe. That's just the nature of the business, whether it's writing, whether it's, you know, anything. Um, you know, people are always going to do that. But I do think that there's – this isn't New York. You know what I mean? Like, th th I feel like this is – kind of different from some of those East Coast places where guys tear each other apart um, it, all the time. And, and, and I think it's sometimes, you know, it gets headlines here when people do that. And I think that's part of, um, you know, he, he taught all of us in, in some respects, even if I didn't, I didn't know him very well personally, but he was a pro. And I think that rubbed off on, on me just as someone who consumed, you know, what he did for all those years. Yeah. The ultimate pro really in this town, in this business. And, uh, I've never, ever met anybody in any field who's more dedicated to their field and who put more into it than Stan did. I mean, he was he was he lived his job and loved his job. He did. It was it was amazing uh, to watch his work ethic in action. You were a competitor of sorts with Stan at various points in time. I think you guys were both you had overlapping radio shows. Um, did you ever think of him that way or did you think of him as, as a Pittsburgh institution um, just because of the kind of guy he was? I mean, I never really thought of that. I, I, you know, you're putting certain time slots or you're a columnist at a paper. You're technically competing with other people, but I've just always sort of tried to do my own thing. And I always got the impression that Stan was doing his own thing too. You know, uh, if you're in this long enough, you're, you're going to be technically competing you know with with other people but i never i never even thought of that really and and i don't know that if stan did either because i didn't see him much in recent years but when we saw each other it was always a 
very cordial conversation. He was always ready uh, with a Pittsburgh sports topic that anybody wanted to discuss. I'm thinking like Steeler games uh, at halftime. He would sort of be holding court in front of all the TVs with the different games on. So it never really, I never really felt that, re- honestly. Any final thoughts, Joe, before we sign off um, on on you know this this legend of the business and and you know what what we should remember about him as, as we move forward and and maybe even in professionally what what can we take from from his legacy? One of the things I talked about today that that when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about was a lot of us love sports. I think many, many of us, because there's always a new topic and something to uh, argue about or share your opinion about every day, tons of stuff. That's why I got into this business. I love doing that. When I was younger, I I think of, you know, junior high school, who's the best running back in the NFL? Uh, You know, it's, it's uh, whoever it might've been at the time, John Riggins, Earl Campbell. You know, no, it's not it's this guy. Well, why? What's your reasoning? What's your reasoning? Stan was always very logical and passionate in what he did. He really lived that. And like I said, even in a press box, it was like you were on a show with him in the press box. It was great. You just say, what do you think of the first half? I thought this. Nah, I thought that. Let's talk about it. You know, what is better than than arguing sports opinions? That's what makes the sports world go round. And he was fully, fully engaged in that and really masterful at it. Yeah, and I, I think it, I think we're a better sports city for it. I think that's why, you know, so many of us are, are able to have careers to, to kind of continue in this business without Stan. And, and I think we're all part of his legacy in that way, even if we didn't know him. But, Joe, thanks for stopping by today. Yeah. Um, really glad we could have this conversation. Um, and if uh, you're joining us for the first time, hopefully you'll you'll stay uh, enjoy our videos in coming weeks when we get back to the sports, right, Joe? Absolutely. And, and for people who want to read more about Stan, learn more about Stan, there's some amazing, uh, stories in the post gazette and amazing tributes out there on social media from everybody from Mario to, uh, Ed Bouchette, Mike White from our newspaper, John Parado from covering the pirates, uh, all kinds of people, um, really were impacted by Stan in a lot of significant ways in their careers. That's just inarguable. And that's an incredible legacy for him to have. All right. Well, thank you, Joe. And of course, I'll include the links to some of those things down in the description because you're right, Joe, they're great. Um, Otherwise, everyone stay tuned later on. Later on today, we'll get back into the sports. Christopher Carter on the North Shore Drive um, will be we'll be publishing that, that this afternoon. So stay tuned. And until next time, just remember, Stan. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. Absolutely. If you like the video, you, Adam, for please like it and today. subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed it on Apple Podcasts, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. For six months of digital access to post-gazette.com for just $6, click the link down in the description.